and multiply that by the uh, depth, sort of depth, fake depth channel that we made. So multiply merge A times B. And uh, this actually needs to be inverted because uh, this was white being in the middle, we want white on the outside. So that's what we want. And uh, then we need to check out this here. We'll need to grade it, but we'll do that in a minute. Let's just uh, merge it in. So this will be a, a plus B masked based off of our shuffle copy node here. And then we'll channel this in. And let's view the final results here. So when adding the invert, that actually affected the shuffle copy. That needs to uh, be unaffected. This needs to go to the grade. So hopefully this will sort our depth channel back out. Yes. And uh, now this here, let's grade the HV40 grain because I can't really see it that well. And let's just make sure this is the right format size. Yes, it is. So, what I want to do is G degrade this and gain it maybe 10 times. And uh, what we want to do is sort this out. So, let's make, tell us that it is 1920 by 1080. And then let's scale this up. Okay, so this is looking nice. Now let's organize ourselves. So uh, this bit here was our depth map that we created. So let's add in the backdrop. Call this depth map. And uh, this here is our grain that we applied. Okay, and these are pretty self-explanatory. What we wanna do now is uh, maybe color correct because it's sort of, even though this plus node here isn't brightening the edges up too much, I think the edges are quite a bit bright. So what we want to do is color correct based off of this depth map. So let's in a, add in a grade node. And what we want to do is basically gamma this down, except we only want this to be applied in certain areas. However, uh, this isn't terribly good for us because it uh, still includes the area with the hand and such. So if we come down here, we can see uh, this is the hand. So we need to multiply A times B and then use that as the mask. So A and B, let's have a look at this. And uh, this is using the over operation. So let's set that to multiply. That's the mask that we really wanted. So I'll put this up here and uh, under the node, hide its input. And uh, this grade can use this as its mask. And then let's view. And we can see what that's done there. That's working as planned. Let's go back to where we have the red in as well. And uh, let's take a look at the impact of this grade node. So let's stop it and put it back on. So we can see that it's darkened the edges a little bit. We want to mask based on RGB. And uh, we can see it's having a way too big an impact on the grain. So let's grade the grain down a little. Maybe put it at 20 and then gain the 
edges up. So that's without, that's with, that looks cool. So now what I think would be cool is if we had some uh, glows. So let's come down to the bottom here, maybe add in a dot node and add in a glow. Now this is a bit uh, too intense, so let's increase the tolerance and let's increase the brightness just so we can definitely see when we're getting it. Okay, so that's, that's where we're getting it. So what I'd like to do is start off with a very small glow. So maybe three pixels in size and this brightness let's put way down to maybe 0.5 and then add another glow. And uh, this one will be a size of maybe six and then just keep doubling it every time. Now I accidentally did that the wrong way around. Glow 1 needs a size of 3. Glow 2 needs a size of 6. Glow 3 needs a size of 12. Glow 4 needs a size of 24. Now these glows are getting a little bit powerful so we can just lower the brightness. Okay, that's looking good. But now what I'd like to do is add in some additional grain and this is just some 35 millimeter grain. And uh, this is stock footage grain, so I won't be supplying this one, but it's 35 millimeter grain and it looks great. So to add this, we can just go A overlay B. Overlay, and uh, let's check this out. Just need to scale this a little. Point three shall do us and let's take a look at the difference that made. So we darkened our image a little bit so we might want to gain this up. And this just adds some detail back into places where there wasn't much detail. So this is pretty much finished. Let's, uh, to reintroduce the distortion, you can either use the PF Barrel uh, plugin or otherwise we can write this out and then bring it to PF Track to reintroduce the distortion. And here we have the final result with the distortion reintroduced and I think it's looking pretty cool. So thanks for watching this tutorial. See you next time.